the conversation of allowing yourself to slow down and listen to your subconscious mind so that you can find the blocks so that you can find those spots where you're feeling unworthy because at the end of the day do i believe that i'm worthy of joy every day of celebration every day do i believe that i'm worthy of like amazing things happening to me every day for some of the most pivotal years of my life, tears were tucked back and hidden behind a masquerade of being tough, being a warrior, someone who could hustle, work hard, and get things done. But it wasn't until I started to get more in tune with who I really am that things took off in my business. Welcome to I Might Cry, a podcast exploring how heart, mind, body, and spirit are all deeply woven into the way we do business. With guest interviews from experts in business strategy, therapy, emotional intelligence, the human body, and so much more. I'm your host, Elizabeth Marks of Almond Leaf Studios. I've been capturing luxury weddings around the globe for decades and now have the privilege of educating others on how to build and grow profitable business doing what they love. I'm on a journey of self-discovery, of becoming more of the uniquely beautiful, messy, and complex human that I was created to be. And I want to invite you to do the same. Join me on this adventure of uncovering the walls we've built that keep us stuck in patterns of limitation so that we can journey into living life with arms and hearts wide open. Let's venture into this together. On today's episode, I have a friend who runs in similar circles. It's no surprise to a lot of you listening that I love masterminds. This is my second one currently and also host my own mastermind. So MT is in my current mastermind and we are both in there together. And it's just been such a joy and an honor to, to watch you kind of stretch into new levels. And it's just so, something so profoundly beautiful when you get to like do business and like encourage each other and grow together, moving mm. things forward in community, in relationship and being each other's biggest cheerleaders, being there to hold space for each other when things come off the rails. Like it's just such a gift. So I am so excited to introduce you guys to Mary Teresa. Go ahead and tell us a little more of who you are um, and what you do. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me, Mary Teresa Tringali. I go by Mary or MT. It's always the very first question everybody says, like, so do you want us to call you that whole entire name? You don't have to. In <laughs> fact, it feels like very formal and or like I'm in trouble when people use my whole name. So Mary Teresa <laughs> is great. I am a life success coach and helping my clients find success on the inside and out. We were just talking about that before we started recording, but my journey has been a long one. And I'm like, where do I begin? Something you said, I just wanted to kind of make sure we paused on this idea of community and being each other's biggest cheerleaders. Like, it's almost like when you enroll into a community, like a mastermind, you're instantly saying yes to being these people's biggest cheerleader who you've never met in your life. Mm -hmm. And this was probably my biggest, whoa, this is what it's like to really have people in your corner feeling the very first time I joined a mastermind years ago. And it's only been more and more since that. And when I do join masterminds, I'm very specific about who I'm enrolling with because that sisterhood feeling or that community feeling because I'm in other masterminds that aren't all women. But just that feeling of like you are enrolling in this place to be everybody's number one cheerleader and allow yourself to be open to everybody else being your number one fan. And I do that in my own program too. I'm sure you do it in yours. And it has become the number one comment made at the end of the program of like, I didn't even know that I needed this type of community in my life. And I will never forget what it felt like to have people I've never met in my life show up for me. Mm. And it doesn't really talk about what I do as a coach, but I just no, thought it was fine. such an important thing to start with because it's true. We've never, we didn't know each other this time last year. And yeah. But it's true. It's like, it's so important that not important to put yourself in rooms where you can be supported in that way, but to be open to receiving 
mm. the support because I think sometimes people feel like they're not worthy of it. Yeah. And it's just because maybe you didn't grow up that way. Maybe you didn't grow up with people who are your biggest fans, which I know there's plenty of people who do grow up in, commu- in environments like that. So anyway, just a little bit of a plug for like doing the work with other people. I actually want to piggyback on that too and just say like, I think it's really interesting because what I noticed is that for a couple years of my life before I joined the first mastermind that I was in, I kept like trying to force my husband (laughs) or friends to be that role for me. Like I Mm. needed the companionship and I needed to like geek out on the numbers and talk about what was going on with this part of the business or that part. And, and my, you know, sweet husband, David, like he did his best to accommodate, but he didn't care. Like he didn't want to be that, like he was not designed to be that role for me. And then I tried Mm. to pivot and put another friend in that role and like not even realizing I was doing it, but Mm. it's just, Ah, it's just something so different. There's so much magic in a shared space like that when you're all chasing after similar goals and you all have similar passions about, and doesn't mean that you're all like running the same kind of business, but that you all are looking to like build a business that's based in a place that feels really aligned. It feels really free that you're wanting to do it from a place that's guided by intuition, not just something that's like formulaic and forceful. Like it's just, I don't know. It's just so different. Yeah. I just got back from a really powerful weekend of growth and expansion with a whole bunch of my friends that I've met through these programs, specifically the business coaching programs. And, you know, the conversations that we have are not the conversations I'm having with my family for sure. Yeah. Or even my best friends from college, they're on a different path than I am. So it's like being able to put yourself in the room as often as, but we were all sitting around at dinner at one point and we had just finished this really deep conversation about the work that we are all doing. And we all like, there was silence when we were done and we took a big collective breath and we were like, can we do this like all of you? Can we have dinner together once a week, even though we're from all different parts of the country? But it's just, it's so powerful to be able to have a different type of conversation on a different frequency with people. I mean, money mindset itself is such a taboo subject, such an interesting subject. Everybody gets triggered by it in a different way. It's so not okay to talk about it with some people. And yet it's possibly, I would say, one of the most important conversations you can have. Hmm. Right? Because money is a resource. I mean, I could get into money mindset. Go Real for it. Deep. That's not even <laughs> that we said we were going to talk about. <laughs> I know. But, it's not what our plan was. <laughs> at all. <laughs> but money mindset is like, money is your resource. Money is a resource. It's not good or bad. It just is. The sooner you can realize you have to have money in your life. It's just the same as food and water and shelter. And it turns out you need money to have those three things. And as soon as you can say... Instead of feeling like, oh, I wish I didn't need money. It's like, yeah, but money is the thing, man. It is the resource of all Did the you things. grow up with a lot of money? Nope. Yeah. No. And I grew up middle class and like with parents that believed that's where we would always be. Mm-hmm. And that they would always be, yeah. really. Like they would always be there and maybe we could try. They could see no path forward for getting out of it. And that's common for a lot of people, don't you? Like, I think it's those upper limits. It's almost like there is a ceiling, a glass ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, of like, you cannot pass through this. Like, that is the barometer. Like, it's from there down. Like, you can choose how much Mm -hmm. money you want to make, but you can never go beyond that. And so in order to break out of that and to go beyond that, what do you see being possible? Or how do you recommend when you are coaching people to like break through that? Because I know Mm. what I do as well. And I think we have a lot of crossover, but I think it would be really interesting for people to hear from you. Like, how do they break through those upper limits? Well, I think that this comes to a whole conversation about worthiness and belief. And that brings me back to the quote I said to you that like this quote from this weekend, like blew my mind. So Gabby Bernstein was one of The speakers, I've heard her a million times. I read all the books. I listen to her podcast. But when she said this, I was like, well, shit. And she said, we will manifest what we believe. And so then it becomes an exercise in belief and worthiness. And then she did say, like, 
your worthiness is your belief. Hmm. And so, you know, my clients are not necessarily business owners, but when I talk to them, there's a lot of conversation about belief beyond what we can see. And she talks a lot about driftwood, Gabby Bernstein. And when I very first heard driftwood, this was another message that I've heard a million times. And until this weekend, I was like, oh, I get it. And she was just like, ask the universe for what you want. The universe is always a yes. And then look out for the driftwood. The driftwood is not literally like, I'm thinking of a robin and a robin has to show up outside your window. It could be as simple as like you're scrolling on Instagram and all of a sudden somebody randomly has a picture of like their apple picking and you happen to see a Robin in the background or somebody by the name of Robin Stein like emails you. It doesn't have to be the exact thing that you're asking for, but the driftwood is that the universe is paying attention and you're in alignment. So for example, Gabby said on the stage, how many people in this room imagine someday speaking on this stage? And people raised their hand and she said, well, guess what, baby? I'm your driftwood. I'm your evidence that what you desire is possible. And if you are feeling in alignment, meaning if this is something you are desiring and you're watching it happen right on stage, then the universe is signaling you, I'm your driftwood. And I was like, oh shit, how many other places in my life have I asked for something and it's shown up and I didn't pay attention to that being the driftwood. So to go back to your question of like, how do I help my clients? So my clients aren't always waiting for it. They're not looking for the, always the 10K months or the 25K months. That isn't even language that they use. What they might be looking for is the raise at work or the opportunity to show their leadership skills or that they can lose weight if they're interested or that they can get out of their own way. And it's kind of like, where else in your world can you borrow evidence that what you seek is possible? Mm. And I think that people at least the clients that I have tend to forget that everything you can see and experience is a message and like an opportunity for what's possible, not an opportunity for you to say, well, that person has it. So I can't. Mm -hmm. The world is so abundant. There's so much opportunity. It has billions and billions. So for all the business owners listening right now, the world is full of billions and billions of people. There is enough to go around. And in fact, one person might buy two or three programs, might buy from two or three people. But it comes it's back. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. But, but it believe? all comes back to what do you believe? But the belief is rooted in the worthiness, mm. right? So if you are looking around you and you see somebody else have it, A, it's possible because look, they've done it or they have it or they have a version of what you think you'd like. So now what? well, I don't know if I can have that. Well, why? Oh, it's because you don't feel worthy or there's some sort of worthiness conversation. Now that you see the evidence and you see what's possible and your vision is expanded to what so much more of what's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, now why? Why can't you have it? It's actually rooted in your worthiness. And that's why when you were saying, you know, did you grow up with money? I didn't. And in fact, I grew up with a mother who believed that people who had money either had to inherit it, had to win it in the lottery, were criminals or major risk takers, meaning they were willing to risk everything they had to make a lot of money and therefore selfish because that included their family. Mm -hmm. So the only honest way to become a millionaire was to win the lottery. So our entire life, so much of her energy and focus was focused on buying the lottery tickets because she truly believed that was the only way she'd ever get out from where she was. And my dad had a little more belief that things were possible because he had friends in his world that were making a lot of money. But he had this big story about hustle, having to be attached to the success. that's a big one. (laughs) Yeah. He grew up as the son of a fisherman in Massachusetts. And, you know, if they couldn't catch fish, they didn't have money. And so, but fishermen lived a very, they still do, live a very challenging, difficult, crazy ass life. 
hard on your body, hard on your mind. It's just crazy. And you have to do so much in such a small time because this, the fishing season is only so long and you can only get so much. So it's like, he just grew up around that and he grew up a lot around, you know, he was a hundred percent Italian and they were just like hustle and grind, hustle and grind. And that's the only honest way because the other option was to be a criminal, literally. So I think for him, like honest work was always just like busting his ass. And he just, he actually went into finance because he thought that was the only way he could make money. And he was miserable his entire life. He was a CPA and he hated it. Mm -hmm. every day, but he did it based on the belief that it was the only way he could have money. Um, I just want to celebrate you because I know that like, just from being in community with you, like the beliefs, the patterns that were handed from our childhood, the ways that our relationship with money has been modeled for us at that level of like closeness when you're that deep in it with a parent figure, especially it can be really hard to undo that. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it's hard work. Like it doesn't mean that we're hustling to do it, but it takes a lot of deep awareness and and deep inner work and just consistency. And I see in you that like you continue to come back to it and you continue to, to recognize and like you're saying to like be open to being called out when you're sinking into a pattern of hustle, Mm -hmm. when you're sinking into a pattern that would reflect that kind of messaging or those kind of beliefs from your parents that are handed down to you. So I just want to pause and celebrate you you with that because it's the work that you're doing. I have one friend of mine that said, like, we write the books that we need to read. That's why we become so passionate about the things that we do because we have grown so much in those areas. So it's almost like we're writing the book that we need to read to hear the message that we needed to hear in the process. And when you were talking about people that like kind of show you what's possible, I would call those expanders. And I want to go a level deeper there too, just because I think this is such an important message. It's again, not at all what we plan on talking about, but it's such an important message because I think especially in, you know, the world, my world prior to the coaching world being wedding photography, there is so much temptation for people to not just get stuck in comparison with, you know, am I doing better? Are they doing better? Well, they're way more talented. So they have all of this, but I could never have that. Or even being really judgy and it can get even a little catty in certain places, which I'm fortunate enough to now know lots of places that that doesn't happen. So if you are a wedding photographer for listening to this, reach out to me. I would love to point you in the direction of some communities that will not be that way. But what I've found is that when you're kind of looking for expanders, let's say that you have accomplished something in your life. You're like, yes, I've got this next thing that I was really desiring. It happened. What's next? And then you're kind of aware of like what's possible. You're looking for those like expanders, that next level version. Yeah. Sometimes when you come across them, it's really triggering. Sometimes you're like, oh, hell no. Like, that's not cool. Like, how did you do that? And you didn't even have to work hard for it, right? That hustle Mm -hmm. belief Mm -hmm. is there. Like, I believe that I have to work hard to deserve the money Mm -hmm. I make. If you have that belief, then you might look at them and say, well, how did you get it so easily? That's not fair. Or like, there's so many different ways that we can be triggered by the people that are, I, I believe, put into our lives to expand our minds of like what's possible for us. That if we can pivot that jealousy into mm-hmm. awareness of like, oh, maybe I feel jealous or triggered by them because I actually want what they have, but I don't believe it's possible for me. And then that anchors right back into what you're saying of like anchors right back into the belief. Well, why Mm -hmm. not? Why Mm -hmm. don't you believe that you can have it? Why do you believe that they get to have it and you don't? Just think of a practical way to kind of follow up with that. And maybe you have more information to give to this, but, or more resources, but even just a journaling exercise of like, why? Like, why don't, because sometimes I think that lives in our subconscious here and we don't actually know. So when we try to just think our way through it with our mind, it's near impossible. Like you have to get dig into the subconscious. You totally. I mean, oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, you're so, so many things. So this time last year I was in a mastermind and this exact situation was happening and a friend of mine, and I was watching her get on our calls and literally say, I had a hundred K lunch. I was on vacation and I was, I barely posted and da, 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 da. And I started my business before she did. And I was like, what the hell? 
what's wrong? It's so and frustrating. you know, I didn't have the language then to say to say what you said, which was that, ooh, this trigger is information. Mm-hmm. It's information for me to pay attention to. Why am I so triggered by this? And what is the story I'm telling myself? Yeah, so in good. this moment. And it's like that is a really also triggering question. Mm-hmm. This actually is so funny. This past weekend, I actually had an incident that I had my friend who's also a coach for me. I was like, I need some support. Can you help me? We were talking, he goes, Well, what is the story you've told about yourself in this situation? And I like, overrode that question. I just kept talking. And he was like, this is all great information, Mary, but what? I'm going to ask you again. What is the story? And so sometimes we don't even know that we're not answering the question, Mm -hmm. which is why it's so great to have a coach who can be a mirror (laughs) for you. Right. And he said, let me ask you the question again. What is the story you're telling yourself about this situation? And my nervous system, when I tell you, I couldn't even like walk. My -hmm. whole body was on fire before I started talking to him. And when he asked me that question and I realized what was really going on, which was the story that I was telling myself, it was like my entire nervous system just like... Melted. Oh my God. It was a game changer. And Mm -hmm. I think that it is such a powerful tool, that one question. Mm -hmm. But the journaling itself has become such a powerful tool for me because sometimes, you know, the fear inventory that we often take. So what's the story you're telling yourself? What is it? Even though I desire this, I fear and doubt that. And then you just start listing stuff out. And what may happen at first is like, you might start writing stuff that you're like, this isn't, I'm not really afraid of this, but I guess I'll just write this. And then all of a sudden you start and you're like, oh, oh, And like you start unraveling all of these layers that you didn't even know, because as you know, your subconscious mind is going all the time. Your subconscious mind is 95% of the thoughts that you have every day. Mm -hmm. And subconscious does not mean that like you aren't aware of them. Subconscious thoughts are the ones that get you home when you're daydreaming, when you're driving home and you don't even remember taking the right onto your street. Those are your subconscious thoughts. So they're there until you pause to allow yourself to open up, to be aware of them. This past weekend, somebody described the subconscious mind as the portal from the unconscious to the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you have to open yourself up to be conscious of those subconscious thoughts. And the journaling is such a power, that fear inventory. I had a client that didn't even know she had fears. Like she wanted to present herself as a fearless person, which I totally get. I would like to believe I'm a completely, I have a lot of courage. I'm very brave. I take a lot of scary action. There are still things that I'm scared of and I don't even know what they are until I sit down and and go over them. And that's one of the things I had to do with my, I was like, why not? Why not? Why not? And then finally we got there. I said, that's one of your fears. That's one of your fears right there. And that is probably blocking you. Mm -hmm. And again, those fears are attached to a worthiness conversation. So the other question, which I think you helped be part of community when I've been working through this is another question for journaling to just let yourself sit with. Before I say it, I almost want to preface this. When you are connecting with your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind likes speed, 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 right? So you are not meant to think on the answers that come up. Whatever comes up is your answer. Yes. So just as much, let's practice really quick. So think of a number one through 10. Got it? Yep. That's your subconscious mind. Whatever number that was. And I'll so just say to you, like the very first one was five. And then I was like, six, eight, should I go with yeah, nine? Yeah, like, yeah. I immediately, my mind took over. But then I was like, wait, no, the very first thing that flashed into my brain was five. Yep. That's a good example of what our brains do, right? Yeah. Like, even yes. in coaching, when we're being coached or when we are coaching, when you ask questions, sometimes there's like a first thing that bubbles up. And that's what I think the point you're making is that like, there's something that bubbles up right away. But then often if we don't just like, bleh, bur- you know, blurt it out, like yep. verbally vomit it right out. That's right. Then, then, then we, we think that it's wrong. wrong. Yeah. Right. And we start to create something else. So It's interesting when you're tapping, I'm sure it happens to you all the time that all of a sudden a new thought will come up and you're like, where the hell did that just come from? So this question, so for you and all the listeners out there, I want you to write this down if you're not driving. How do you choose to wake up every day? Mm -hmm. 
How do you choose to wake up every day? So I was at a retreat not too long ago and a few months ago, and that question was asked. And the first word that came to me was disappointed. Mm. And I literally was like, who's that for? Who's that message for? Not me. (laughs) And instantly, then I heard every day I choose to wake up expecting disappointment. And then I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll write that down. And then I went into the blame game of blaming Mm -hmm. the person in which my mother who programmed that into me. And I had all the money stories that we just talked about, right? Like that we're not worthy of like big, huge life. So every day we get to wake up disappointed that we didn't win the lottery. Yeah. That's a story for a whole other day. It's rooted much deeper, but the conversation of allowing yourself to slow down and listen to your subconscious mind so that you can find the blocks so that you can find those spots where you're feeling unworthy. Mm. Because at the end of the day, do I believe that I'm worthy of joy every day? Or do I believe like what's the opposite of disappointment of celebration every day? Do I believe that I'm worthy of like amazing things happening to me every day? Mm. Not even that it's possible. Right. Do I believe that I'm worthy of it? It's a totally different conversation. Totally. Do I deserve it? I'm interrupting this episode briefly to let you know that if you could use a little support as you grow your business and really work on expanding your heart and your mind, creating your own version of success in your own life, I'd love to have you apply. You can go to almondleafstudios.com forward slash coaching to get your application in and apply for one-on-one coaching with me. Now back to the show. We're talking about the subconscious and we've kind of talked about journaling and then you've hinted at tapping. For anybody that doesn't know what tapping is, we've got lots of other resources. DM either of us on Instagram about it. We'll (laughs) hook you up with lots of tools. It's called emotional freedom technique, EFT, tapping. But tell us a little more, MT, like what other tools do you like to use to get into the subconscious and reprogram? Yeah. So I'm an NLP certified practitioner. So I have a bunch of modalities that we do with NLP that tap into your subconscious mind. I also do timeline work with time techniques. Timeline is not just your timeline from now and from your birth till now, but actually it can go as far back as past lives, past generations, which is often why I say that our programming is not ours. It belongs to, and not even our parents sometimes. It belongs to generations before them. Those modalities are super helpful to work on because our subconscious mind is programmed in there. But one of my favorite is hypnosis. And what I love about hypnosis, and I'm sure that you talked about this with your community before, but EFT tapping, we're rewiring your brain. We're literally sending new messages to your brain that it's okay for you to release the hold that you have on these emotions and these stories and these belief systems. And what we're also doing is creating these new neural pathways to kind of new belief systems. And it was so cool. We actually watched a video this weekend of like watching the brain actually activate. And one of the things that was said is that your brain is not your mind. Your mind is not your brain, but your mind cannot survive without your brain. Your brain is nothing without your mind, right? And your mind is the thing that activates and changes your brain and your brain can change, which is actually relatively new science. So it's actually not surprising that our our parents don't have that point of view because they did not grow up with that science being mainstream, it's still not even mainstream. Yeah, It was believed for a very long time that your brain could not be changed. But now we're learning, which is why like the world in which we are in with tapping and NLP and everything else is in hypnosis is like growing more rapidly now because the science backs it up. And one way I like to describe it is that if you have a corn maze, you see a corn maze in the field, that's kind of like what you're neural pathways look like right now. Those are the belief systems, the maze, the path in between all the corn. When we do EFT tapping, when we do time techniques, NLP or hypnosis, what you're doing is essentially taking a plow to that corn maze and going right through it and creating a new pathway. And the more times that you take the plow or even you could just pretend you're mowing your lawn. If you just take the lawnmower and go once over the grass, 
what's going to happen? You're going to create that path and everything else is going to grow up around it. And the more you mow that one path, the more the grass grows around it, but that path stays there. And that's essentially what we want to do with the tapping, which is why tapping is so cool. It's so accessible. You can do it anywhere, anytime. But also the modalities and hypnosis, the more you do it, the more you're creating that path and the more eventually the grass doesn't grow as fast there, right? Like the grass is slower and you do have to keep up that maintenance, but you don't have to mow it as often. And that's essentially what we do. And with hypnosis, you're creating those neural neural pathways, but you're also planting seeds along the way. The more you can plant the seeds in your subconscious mind, the more you create those neural pathways that say you are worthy, that say you can have these things that actually will change your belief systems, which is why I love it so much. Oh, I love that. So (laughs) a couple of years ago, my awareness of what hypnosis was, was basically like, I don't know, something that might get you accidentally sexually abused. (laughs) Like, yeah. I heard stories of like, well, they went into hypnosis and then this thing happened. They didn't find yeah. out about until years later or whatever. Like crazy stories. It was just this totally taboo, like, we don't go there. It was yeah. like not something that was ever on my radar. And I will say too that I have now fallen in love with it. And I've been trying to even do it, like, even at the gym, I have been a part of a Planet Fitness, a little plug for Planet Fitness. <laughs> uh, nice. But they have these massage chairs and hydro massage chairs afterwards. So after my workout, sometimes I'll go and sit in that. And I usually will use that time to like do, you know, either a fear inventory or kind of journaling about some things. But I've been swapping that out recently with doing a hypnosis about money stuff specifically and just trying to like see if I can do it even in that time frame, just because then it's rep- mm-hmm. that repetition of like every single day. So I have fallen in love with hypnosis, but I'm wondering, could we give anyone listening a little simple taste of what that looks like? Yeah. So we actually together kind of created this before we started. And it was funny because we were talking about other things and then our we did this and then our whole conversation was like shaped on what we put together or what we talked about for the hypnosis. So that's awesome. But here's what I want to say. <laughs> So I grew up knowing hypnosis as the X-rated hypnosis that you go to the comedy club to see, right? Ah. What you should know about hypnosis is that you are in control all the time. The entire time you are in control. You're actually not even going to feel like you're being hypnotized. You're going to feel very, very relaxed. If you happen to be a little bit sleepy, you may fall asleep. So anybody driving, do not do this. You might want to pause this listen to something else until you get home and you can do this. But you are in control the entire time. You're basically getting into a trance. And the work of hypnosis is the process of allowing yourself to get into the trance. So it's another one of those things that kind of is like, did it work? Did it not work? And it's just, let yourself just experience it. The more you do it, you just might notice that something that used to trigger you in a way that didn't feel good, doesn't trigger you anymore. Or maybe all of a sudden you say something, you're like, did that just come out of my mouth? Like, I can do that. You'll be like, did that just come out of my mouth? And suddenly you realize that your subconscious mind isn't telling you otherwise anymore, right? Um, You explained, you said trance, like getting into the trance and that that's the work. Can you explain what you mean by that? Like, what's the state that we're in, in a hypnotic state? It's just a super duper relaxed state. Your and entire your body to come forward more. Yeah. Or just be open. Yeah. It's kind of like your body and your mind or your body and your brain, I should say, is like has a really tough grasp, mm-hmm. hug, hold on your subconscious mind. And going into trance is basically not arguing with mm. your conscious mind, like not letting your conscious mind to have the lead. Kind of thing. So much sense. Yeah. So you basically are just like becoming this total open and yes, vulnerable, which is why it is so important that you do it with somebody that you feel comfortable with in a space Mm -hmm. that you feel safe. And hopefully, if there's anybody doing harmful things, they're getting reported. Like I said, you should not be conscious, but you are in control at all times. So if you get to a point where this is not okay, just get yourself up, 
walk around, do some snapping, just to wake it, maybe some clapping just to wake yourself up. You can also do some tapping. There's a, a gamut point on your hand that's between your ring finger and your pinky. This one spot, it's like in between those two, those bones. If you just tap right there, it's just an easy access point to calm down your nervous system if anything happens. I think that's all I want to say before we get started, except again, if you are driving, do not do this. Okay, so sometimes people like to get their face mask if that feels good for you. You can do that and just get comfortable. You can be doing it laying down. You can be doing it in a chair, wherever you feel most comfortable. Just sit back and relax. And when you're ready, you can just go ahead and close your eyes and get comfortable. In a very few moments, you're going to be more relaxed than you've ever known yourself to be. I'm going to mention certain parts of your body and as I do, I want you to just feel that part begin to relax. Just feel that part just begin to relax. In order to help you relax, I want you to imagine yourself in a wonderfully magical forest. It's almost nighttime and the sky is a beautiful indigo blue. The stars are coming out and the moon is lighting up the rich forest trees. Off in the distance, you hear the hypnotic sounds of a bumbling brook and the crickets seem to be lulling you to sleep. And as you lie motionless, you begin noticing a wonderfully white light just above your head. This white light is the most relaxing light you could imagine. And as it begins to lower around the crown of your head, you seem to be touched with a desire and a willingness to relax deeper and deeper with every breath you take. Continuing to lower now, it begins to touch the forehead. And as it does, I want you to feel all the little frown lines all the little worry lines in the forehead just seem to disappear. The forehead smooths out, feels so relaxed, and you feel this relaxing light coming around your eyes. Now the eyelids seem to become very, very heavy. So heavy, they don't even seem to want to open. They may flutter a little bit, but that's okay. Just feel how heavy they are. And as the relaxation comes down around the facial muscles now, all the little muscles in the facial area just begin to relax. Relaxation comes further down around the mouth now, and all the hundreds of little muscles around the mouth just start to relax. So much so, that the lower jawbone becomes heavy and the teeth part. The mouth may even open up a little bit with relaxation as you continue deeper and deeper relaxed. Feel this relaxation now around the lower jawbone and behind the ears so that all the little nerve endings behind the ears just seem to relax as you continue deeper and deeper, and even deeper. The relaxation goes to the back of the neck now, down around the shoulders. So much tension seems to go to our shoulders. But now you feel the shoulders just begin to relax. You can even feel them drop a little. The relaxation seems to go to the backbone now. And as it goes down the spinal column, it seems to go out to the sides so that every muscle, every nerve, and every fiber in the back just seems to relax. 
the relaxation seems to come now to the small of the back and around the bottom. This warm sense of relaxation comes to the back of the thigh, now and into the hollow of the knee, around the calf of the leg, around the heel, to the bottom of the foot, and each and every toe just relaxes even more and more as you go deeper, deeper, and even deeper. Calm, very peaceful, very relaxed. And now, if necessary, allow yourself to shift your body however you need to in order to become even more comfortable and become even more and more relaxed. We are going to proceed to relax the rest of you now. Starting with the throat muscles. Feel the throat muscles just start to relax. The relaxation comes down the fronts of the shoulders, down the upper arm, over the elbow, down the forearm, to the hand, and each and every finger just relaxes more and more and more as you go deeper, deeper, and even deeper relaxed. Just relaxing, doing so very, very well now as you continue to relax. Feel the relaxation now coming back to the throat, muscles, down into the chest, and all the muscles and organs within the chest now just begin to relax. This relaxation continues down the stomach area, and all the muscles and organs within the stomach just seem to relax. This warm sensation of relaxation goes down into the thighs, over the knees, down the shin bone, across the instep of the foot, and into the foot itself. And each and every toe just relaxes more and more as you go deeper, relax deeper, and you continue deeper and even deeper, calm, very, very relaxed. Now I want you to imagine yourself standing in this forest and at the base of the feet is a beautiful stone stairway that leads downward into a very safe valley of relaxation. This staircase will lead you into a profound state of deep, deep hypnosis. We're going to go down these stairs now, and as I count backwards from 10 to zero, each number will take you even deeper and deeper and even deeper. When you are ready to go down these stairs, simply nod your head, please. That's right. Very good. 10. Take that first step down. 9. Deeper, deeper. 8. Way down now. 7. Deeper, deeper. Six, deeper, feeling very relaxed. Five, deeper. Four, you are going into a deep state of hypnosis now. Three, going deeper. Two, relax to even move, feeling very calm. One, at the next number, you will enter this beautiful place of peace and tranquility called deep, deep hypnosis, more relaxed and peaceful than you've ever known yourself to be. Is that okay with you? Nod your head, please. Wonderful. Zero. You are worthy of everything you desire. Your desires are meant for you. You have them on purpose. You are worthy of those desires because they came to you and they are yours to have. 
this gets to be easy, just as easy as having the desire in the first place, just as easy as the idea came to you, just as easy as it was to think of a number one to 10. This desire gets to come to you easily and effortlessly with joy and pleasure. It is safe for you to just be, to just be grateful, to just be thankful, to just be here now. It is safe for you to spend time reflecting and celebrating and letting it be easy. The beingness of it all is the most important work there is. It is safe for you to relax. It is safe for you to be in pleasure. It is safe for you to feel joy as often as you desire. You get to feel good. You get to make feeling good a priority. When you feel good, the world benefits. If you are being called to impact the world in a bigger way, then it is literally your job to feel good. Because when you feel good, you create things at your highest vibration, things that can change the world. So it is your job to feel good and it is safe for you to make it a priority. When you choose to relax, when you choose pleasure and joy, money flows to you easily and effortlessly as if you didn't even try. It is safe for you to open your arms wide and receive the abundance of money and energy and joy and pleasure. Opening up your arms to receive all of this is your job. And sometimes that requires stillness. Sometimes that requires doing nothing at all. It is safe for you to listen to what you need, to listen to your unconscious mind, It is safe for you to believe that these desires that you have are yours. It is safe for you to believe in yourself. It is safe for you to believe that you are worthy of it all. Your desires are meant for you. Your desires are yours on purpose. And you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of believing in yourself. You get to have unwavering faith in yourself and what you are here to create in the world. Your belief and faith are stronger than your fear. You are worthy of having every thing you desire. You are worthy of believing that you can have it all. You are worthy of believing that anything is possible. And anything is possible for you. And you are worthy of receiving it all. You are worthy of letting it be easy. You are worthy of letting it be abundant. You get to be in pleasure, joy, and relaxation. It is your job to be there 
so that you can feel good. It is so good to feel good. When you feel good, you create at your highest vibration and you create opportunities for others to find joy and pleasure in the world. When you choose to relax, when you choose pleasure and joy, money and opportunity will flow to you easily and effortlessly. Money is a resource for you to have all of your desires and your desires are yours on purpose and it is safe for you to have them. It is safe for you to prioritize peace and harmony on the inside because success is an inside job first. Your belief and your faith in your abilities and what is possible for you in this world are stronger than your fears. And this is how you choose to live every single day. Every day you wake up choosing to have faith and belief that anything is possible and you are worthy of it all. In a moment, I'll count from one to five. As I do with each number, I count. You'll come 20% of the way back into the room, back to wakeful awareness. One, beginning to feel the energy stirring in your body. Two, coming back into the room. Three, take a nice deep breath. Four, Take a nice big stretch. And five. Eyes wide open. Welcome back. Oh my goodness. Thank you for doing that. I no never problem. fell asleep during it. <laughs> well, your subconscious mind was with us the whole time. Yes. Even if you got a little sleepy. So glad yeah. that you had the disclaimer for those who are driving to not drive during it. Yes. Well, even, you know, I read the hypnotic script and even I start to go into a hypnotic space. So I know that I can do it and I'm the one facilitating. So definitely cannot do it while you're driving. Even yeah. listening could even send you into a space. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And tell us a little more about offerings that you have for people that are like, I love this flavor. I have to have more mm. of it. Who is MT and how do I get a hold of her? Yeah. Yes. So I am, I spend most of my time on Instagram. So at mary.teresa.tringali. I do have a lot of EFT tapping opportunities. Your first tapping session is free. I do work with clients one-on-one. So I have one-on-one offerings. And I also do some VIP days where I could create a custom hypnosis for you, as well as do the time techniques that I had spoken about or any other NLP modalities that might help rewire your brain. But that's what I have going on right now. More programs and opportunities. I am running my signature program, the Align and Empower Project right now. So that's not open for enrollment just yet and probably won't be until the next year. I also wrote a book, but it has nothing to do with any of the stuff that we talked about today. Well, it kind of does, but Stand in Your Power, it's available. If you go to the link in my bio and in Instagram, it's there, but it is basically the story, the journey that I took to get out of a really, really bad, dark place in my life. It's the journey that I take all of my clients on. So it is a helpful place to start. But then I also have these extra amazing tools like hypnosis and tapping and time techniques that I get to tap into. So that's the way to find me. So I just come see me. the world of you and I hope oh, that gotcha. comes and jumps onto your page and gets all of the things and I don't even Thank know you. what I'm trying to say. I think I'm still half asleep. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's hard. 
Thank you so much for sharing your space with me. And this conversation was awesome. I know that we could probably talk about it forever. Oh, yeah. I love this stuff. I mean, I've just seen so much life transformation of my own through some of these modalities. And so Mm -hmm. I'm just such a firm believer in it because it can feel like you're just constantly hitting a brick wall when you're trying to change your patterns, your behaviors, your your life from a Mm -hmm. place of like muscling through or powering through or hustle. Like it just, this is such a different way of doing life and doing business Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you just are literally tapping into your subconscious. And I don't know, it's just so different. So I'm such a firm. Yeah. Yeah. So appreciate what you do. We'll make sure we link all of those in the show notes as well. So if anybody listening, if you're like, I didn't catch that, just go to the show notes. We'll make sure you have everything linked there that you need to access all of the goodies that she provides. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast today, do us a favor and hit subscribe and then leave us a review. If you're looking for more, you can find us at almondleafstudios.com or on Instagram at almondleaf. Remember, you are enough. You are love, you are light, and you are worthy simply because you exist.